community my name is Pam and if you're new to this channel welcome um, today's topic you guys is going to be talking about spotting the difference spotting the difference between three of our pothos which would be the mandula the enjoy and the pearls and jade now all three of these plants are cultivars of the marble queen pothos so when we do go to our stores nurseries or big box stores it can be quite challenging to spot um, which is which and actually tell the difference. So I just thought it'd be a great idea to share with you guys the differences that I found uh, between all three of these plants so that we would know exactly which plants we are buying and introducing into our collection. So let's just get right into it. Um, it's going to be a quick video you guys. I'm going to start off with the Manjula uh, Pothos. Now I don't actually have this particular variety in my plant collection so I'm going to share um, a picture or a couple of photos so you guys can actually follow along and see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, now for Manjula for me, um, it's a little bit more easier for me to actually pick this particular plant out because the leaves um, on this plant is larger and they also have more of a wavier edge. It's not like a traditional pothos where the leaves lay down and be flat. Now, too, there's variations of um, shades of colors with the leaves. It could be uh, shades of gray, possibly white cream or um, light green, and sometimes heavily speckled. So out of the three pothos varieties that I'm discussing today, I would say Manjula more does resemble the Marble Queen um, out of all three. Now my next two plants you guys I actually do have in my plant collection and I want to share a picture of it and I'm going to start with the en Enjoy. Now I brought this plant um, not too long ago you guys and um, I just got it because it was in this very cool nice um, pot. But the Enjoy, um, the leaves you guys are smaller and you'll see that it's more of a light green variegation with the white. It doesn't have very much speckling in it at all. And the leaves are also, not only are the leaves small, but they're broader. Like take a look at this, like broad down here with a tip. Very beautiful. And I really can tell because the white portion of the leaves if you take a look does not have as much speckling as a manjula would and the leaves are much smaller but a very beautiful plant nonetheless now the difference for the next one I'm going to show you guys will be the pearls and jade and we'll talk a little bit about the difference with that now the pearls and jade as you can see you guys will have a few flecks of green, white, and cream coloration on the leaves. And another thing, characteristics that you can actually tell the difference between is the leaves actually feel a little bit thinner, like uh, like paper thin. The leaves are also small, like uh, Enjoy, and it also can be compact. But one of the things that you can also take a look at, you guys, is that speckling. Whereas the Enjoy, where's the white at, you'll see more white and very little speckling where with the pearls and jade you do see a lot of the speckles in the white portion. And I've had this plant for about a year you guys so it's trailing pretty okay. So those is pretty much how you can tell the difference between all three plants you guys is more or less the variegation of the leaves, the also the size of the leaves and of course with the manjula, the actual waviness of the edges of the leaves. Like I said, this is a pearl and jade, so this is more flat like a traditional pothos. So let's just get into the care real quick. I'm just some, going to provide some quick care tips. Of course, you guys, I don't have the manjula in my collection as I made a mention, but I do have the pearls and jade as well as the enjoy. So really quick. Just want to want y'all to actually be able to see the difference in it. It's very small as far as uh, the difference, but you can spot it if you take a quick, closer look with the color of the leaves. As I made a mention, the white portion on this leaf 
the enjoy will be um, not as speckled as with the pearls and jade. But yeah, let me get into the care tips, you guys, real quick. At least can share the care tips for these plants is pretty much the same. So let me start with the soil. Now, of course, you guys want to have an airy soil mix. Um, I would recommend uh, for this plant, at least the pearls and jade. I've had it in my collection for about a year now, as I made a mention. And I have more of a regular potting soil mix with 25% perlite, and I also have 25% orchid uh, bark in it to give it a little bit more of an area of soil. Now, in regards to the water, you got to be very consistent with your watering schedule with these particular plants. They will communicate with you if you are not being accurate with the water, whether it be overwatering or underwater. Now, I let this plant completely dry out and then I'll give it a good drink. But one of the key indicators that you can tell in regards to this plant, these plants, how they can be communicative as far as letting you guys know whether or not if you're overwatering the plant or underwatering the plant, one of the key signs would be, of course, the wilting of the stems, possibly leaves curling up or crispingness. And also, if you see brown or black um, tips on the leaves, can also be an indicator of whether you're overwatering or possibly underwatering the plant. Now, the temperature um, range would be between 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think on the lower end of the scale would resemble our normal uh, temperature inside our home. So it's very versatile. It's, it's definitely a good house plant to have in your environment. Now the light, uh, what I have noticed, unlike the Marble Queen, how it's a little bit more demanding with the light, these particular plants, in my opinion, or my, at least under my care, can tolerate all different variations or variations of light. The only thing we want to be mindful of to avoid it from having direct light and possibly uh, too much maybe control the bright indirect light because it can possibly damage or burn the leaves. Now um, you will notice that sometimes if it's not getting enough light some of that coloration that white creaminess can turn into a possible all green um, leaf or even a yellowish uh, cream or yellowish green type of leaf if it's not getting adequate lighting. So you want to make sure you pick a good light source where it is at least maintaining the actual color of the leaves. Now for my pothos, I have my pothos pearls and jade I'm actually in my dining area where it's receiving some dampled indirect um, I would say medium light and I really haven't had any problems with the color it hasn't really changed too much um, so it's very it's adapted very well with that particular lighting situation where in, regard, in regards to my pothos enjoy this plant is actually I have it hanging actually in my bedroom where it's not getting that much light now I just not too long ago purchased this particular plant you guys so I really don't know how well or I haven't had it long enough in my collection for it to actually tell me whether or not if it likes the light source. I really haven't had any issues. It is getting some dampled light but it's more or less like slightly lit in almost like a, 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 a darker corner but it is getting different shades of light but it's just not as bright and probably not as frequent. So I'll leave it there for now, but if I see any signs of decline, I may possibly move it into a, a little bit more brighter light situation. But so far, so good with um, this plant. Now, as far as fertilizing, I haven't fertilized um, my, my pearls and jade yet. Um, like I said, I had it for almost a year. So I probably will fertilize it or start fertilizing this plant. And, this growing season. Now I do know that these plants are not a heavy feeder, they're light feeder. So I do happen to have some worm castings and I would recommend going the organic route with any plant that you have that would be considered a light feeder. And I'm just going to mix a tablespoon or so into the soil and then you know just water it that way throughout the growing season so it can get some nutrients. But that's pretty much it for um, this video you guys. You let me know you guys if you can spot the difference between the pearls and jade, the enjoy and the manjul and let me know if you have any of these plants in your collection. I am actually interested in um, purchasing the manjul. It just doesn't seem like 
to be that plant that's really out there right now. Um, at least where I buy my plants from, it doesn't seem to be on the market. So I'm looking out for it because I really would like to add that to my collection. Um, I am a fan of the Marble Queen, which I do have that pothos as well, but I love all that beautiful white variegations in the leaves. So yeah, just comment below you guys and let me know if you have any of these plants and any additional care tips that you can provide because like I said, this is a channel for all of us to learn and grow um, in this plant community together. So keep in mind, you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, definitely hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I appreciate any support you guys can give me. Um, enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. Bye.